These little creatures belong to the group Odonata. They go by the name Demoiselle. Odonata are found throughout the world in all kinds of habitats, but all of these areas have one thing in common, the presence of water. Because for reproduction, these animals depend on water. As adults, Adonita are airborne. Their skills in backward flying, hovering and sudden acceleration are unparalleled. These skills make Adonita formidable hunters that chase anything that's the right size. Flies, mosquitoes, butterflies and even other Adonita. They usually choose an observation post from which they hunt. And their technique is as simple as it is efficient. They bend their legs together and grab prey literally from the air. Like all insects, the body of an Adonata consists of three parts. The head is striking because of the huge compound eyes with which Adonata perceive the world around them by combining thousands of images. Also the strong mouth parts stand out and are ideal for cracking the armour of prey. Like all insects, the thorax bears three pairs of legs and two pairs of enormous wings. Their segmented abdomen is long and serves as a stabilising factor while in flight. It contains many important organs, including those for reproduction. The pumping movements of the abdomen help to refresh the air in its respiratory system. When we take a closer look, it becomes clear that a donata can be divided into two groups, namely those that fold their wings together while at rest and those that do not. This difference gives guidance for the classification of Adonata into two groups, damselflies and dragonflies. But there are more differences. Damselflies have their compound eyes positioned at the side of their head, and both eyes are clearly separated, while the compound eyes of dragonflies are so big that they touch each other on top of the head. Also differences in size and stature are striking. With dimensions of over three inches, many dragonflies are substantially larger than damselflies that are up to one and a half inches long. For reproduction, Adonata moved towards streams, ponds and lakes. But this is not without risk. Danger lurks everywhere. Yet the need to reproduce is strong and sexually willing males hunt for females. Once a male finds a willing female, he grabs her with his appendages, just behind her head. By holding her tightly, he protects her from competitors. Prior to this conquest, the male stores his sperm in a secondary genital in his abdomen. And while he holds the female firmly, she retrieves his sperm with her own genitals. Thus, the so-called mating wheel is formed, which is characteristic of Adonata. After mating, the eggs are deposited. Virtually all Adonata deposit their eggs in or near water. 
Some do it in tandem formation. Some simply drop them into the water or they scatter them near aquatic plants, as this chaser does. Other Adonata hide their eggs in the muddy banks of pools and streams. Some even look for the most suitable spots, like this female damselfly. She uses her ovipositor to make a small hole in an aquatic plant for one of her eggs. And under the right conditions, these eggs develop into offspring. During the cold season, most adult Adonata are dead. Yet Adonata are there for the full year. But where could they be? The answer lies underwater. Their larvae are entirely aquatic. They emerged from the eggs that their parents left behind. There, the larva of a dragonfly. The head already shows some characteristics of the adult animal. The larvae of Adonata are fierce predators. Using their antennae and eyes for detecting prey, they snatch everything within the appropriate size. Carefully, it crawls closer. And a highly modified lip is being thrust forward to grasp the prey. Odonata live underwater in this larval stage. In many species the larval stage takes one or two years, but in some it lasts for more than five years. Like all insects, these larvae have to molt in order to grow. When molting, it crawls out of its old skeleton and starts growing before the new skeleton cures. By molting, they gradually change. But the biggest change is yet to come. When a larva has matured, it climbs out of the water. This is not without risk. Once it starts to dry out, there is no way back, and predators lurk everywhere. At a suitable spot, the larva holds itself firmly, and its skeleton cracks open. An adult Adonator begins the battle to free itself. First, the head appears. Then the thorax, with the legs and folded wings. After a short rest, the animal holds itself firmly once more and pulls out the abdomen. Now the Adonator is mobile again but this time as an adult. But flying is still impossible. First, it has to expand its wings to their full size and stretch the abdomen to its full length. This takes some time, but slowly this adult Adonator gains color. Its new skin cures and turns into a strong and hard armor. Then, finally, the adult Adonator 
flies off into a new and unknown world. <laughs>